So this is an excellent example of why a luthier shouldn't smoke some hard crack and then route a saddle slot. <laughs> We've got a perfect storm. We don't care about the second wind or something else to take for. Hello and welcome to Burnham Guitars and Ukuleles. Uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I repair a Gibson Advanced Jumbo. Uh, it has a unique set of problems associated with the bridge and saddle slot. Uh, it's not an old guitar, it's like a reissue from 2010 or something like that. But it's a nice, well-kept guitar, it sounds good. Everything else is good, the net pro projection and uh, everything else, but uh, let me just show you what the problem is with the saddle slot. Okay, so this is the problem with this guitar. Firstly, it's got a through saddle, so the saddle isn't in a pocket like a normal, normal bridge. Uh, I actually think these look really cool, but they, they do have their own problems. Um, that in itself isn't a problem, but it is a problem because of the next thing that I'm going to tell you. Can you see that? See how the base side here is much higher than the treble side. And if I put a 12 inch ruler on here, you can really see how bizarre it is. So that's touching the top over there. And then this side, I can get my finger under and that's just over 12 inches. It has a under saddle pickup pocket routed into that. The other problem is, while this is a 1 8 saddle and saddle slot, the pocket for the under saddle pickup was 3 30 seconds. So another unfortunate feature of this uh, 330 second pocket. So again, this is a 1 8 saddle slot, but the pocket in there is 330 seconds. And if you look, it tapers in depth. So it's about 1 30 second deep here, and it tapers to about 330 seconds, it looks like, just here. I can, I can actually check the depth using one of these and it's all a bit too tight to see but I can make a little pencil line on the edge there and then you can see the pencil line there so it's yeah it's exactly one eighth deep And so, what, <laughs> what all that adds up to is, I would have hated to be the person who installed this and tried to get a even response out of that pickup. Uh, so it's kind of a calamity of problems, really. Um, so, luckily, I'm going to be filling all this in and replacing it with a pancake pickup. That'll be another video. So the first step is to fill up the two holes which are on either end of the uh, pickup pocket. Uh, one was when the lead came through and the other one is you tuck in this end. Not so much with these fishermen, the hard ones, but the more like the LR bags kind of mesh ones. It's good to drill a second hole at the treble side end and tuck that in. Um, drill it at an angle. But, I'll do another video on that. Uh, so fill up those holes, then fill up the 332nd pocket and let that dry overnight. I'll be using hot high glue and I'll be using some Madagascar rosewood to match the bridge. After that, 
I've got some tools which are going to be perfect for leveling that saddle slot, making sure that the this saddle when it goes back in, which is like a four inch saddle, uh, making sure that that has excellent contact with the bottom of the slot so the K and K pickup will pick up everything it needs to to make this guitar sound excellent. So let's get on with it. The holes that the pickup wire goes through uh, is uh, one eighth, and I bought this little piece of poplar dowel uh, for it was like a dollar seventy from True Value, and uh, that's kind of fun to do actually. Uh, it's proving to be really helpful. I bought it for something else, but. Uh, this is going to be perfect for just filling in these holes superficially. Another problem that I just noticed was that this, the base side hole, some numb nut drilled straight down and then thought better of it. You can see the first hole there and then the second hole down there. And this is the base side of the bridge. I bet you they drilled Actually, I'm not sure because this isn't the pickup that I... Normally with this you'd have to drill straight down because it's a right angle. But usually it's better to drill at an angle. Uh, so I don't actually know which one they did first. But whatever they did first was the wrong one. <laughs> because they did two holes. So I'm going to fill both of those up. And uh, then keep going. I'm going to charge extra for that third hole. It's like... Five bucks? Look at the colors, colors, colors. The main point of this is just to fill the hole, but I will be going all the way through to the uh, until I can feel this on the inside of the bridge plate. I'm going to shave probably an inch off because that will allow me to use it for both sides. It's uh, even with the bridge plate surface on the inside. So here's the dowel and uh, there's the line, so I'm just going to chop this with the razor saw. I'm going to be using my professional hide glue applicator. <laughs> I call it Alan. And I'm just using a, a really precision expensive machinist rule to uh, as a hammer <laughs> effectively to uh, squish this down but really I'm I'm using this you know half inch of flat surface to get the top of that plug flush with the bottom of the saddle slot actually it's not the saddle slot it's the saddle pocket in the saddle slot and that is really nicely position on the inside too. Um, tomorrow I'll I'll just hit that with a bit of like 180 sandpaper and a small block and that'll come down in about five seconds. You got the white knuckles holding on a tie. So I'm just guessing the width of this 330 seconds. I'm gonna bandsaw uh, nice and clear of this line and then uh, take that down with some hand sanding. Sand the bottom flat, check it with a ruler and then I sand one of the sides flat and so I don't touch either of those surfaces again. Then I take it down from the other side until it's the right thickness. Let's double check this length in the saddle slot. Curve the ends over and that just matches the routed saddle slot. Here is the made plug, and it goes that side down. I made sure that the bottom of it was flat. Uh, another thing I did was cut some Teflon to act as a little clamp, and that is about 1 8 Time to glue it in. Pushing it up against the the deeper side first, just so it uh, make sure it goes in.
So that's all clamped up. Uh, just a little bit of light pressure with the clamps. Uh, these are the four or five inch ones from Stumac. They're really good. And I've got some seven inch, I think they are. Uh, if you glue bridges on, just get those clamps. They're really good. There's a little bit of glue squeeze out, which I'm not going to worry about because I'll deal with that tomorrow with uh, scalpels and files and stuff like that. So not a problem at all. Uh, so let's wait till tomorrow. So to take care of those plugs inside, just uh, grab a little bit of self-adhesive paper, stick it to that, and get sanding. So just using that little handy block, I'm just going to take down the exposed plugs. Then I just come in with some uh, the same material, the self-adhesive sandpaper, and you just fold it back on itself and it's really easy to handle. And you just go through the grits, take it up to like 220, maybe 320 if you fancy. So there we have the sanded down plugs and that's a really nice finish and it's going to be perfect for my next job on this guitar which is to install a K, &K pickup but that is for the next video so it's the next day and the clamps are off the teflon's out there's a few different ways that i can go about removing the exposed or uh, protruding wood from the plug that i put in the first way to do it and this is in no order of preference or badness but just ways to do it uh, would be to reroute the slot but the problem with routing this particular job there's there's one major reason why I wouldn't do it but I wouldn't do it even if this didn't exist was the saddle slot is actually angled down so it's higher up on the base side than the low side the <laughs> treble side um normally that's not the case and i don't i don't know why that would have been routed that way normally you know you've got a you know the cross section the rectangle and the slot is just parallel with the bottom but this tapers from the base side to the treble side um, that's pretty strange I'm not a full-time repairer so I don't see everything that those guys do girls do uh, but I haven't seen this before and that would explain why the the pocket for the under saddle pickup was uh, different in depth I didn't notice it at the time because it's just not something that I look for. So routing's not going to happen. <laughs> I did mention that I wouldn't route this anyway. So routing, routing a saddle slot is the way to go about it for a new a uh, new bridge. But when you're repairing this, I I personally prefer to not reroute already routed things. One, you might widen the saddle slot so I don't want it wider than the 1 8 that it already is. You can get around that by using a smaller drill bit and doing it twice but you know when you're routing even at the best of times it's uh, there's a certain pucker factor and you can puck it up uh, <laughs> with a P and you, you can ruin things a lot quicker when you're using machinery than you can when you are hand finessing something. So yeah, even if the saddle slot wasn't uh, tapering in depth, I would not use a router. The other way to do it is a small chisel and just taking off the excess, and I probably actually will do that uh, just to get, you know, 80% of it down because it's protruding about 230 seconds up there or in there um, another way is to get a, a 
piece of something that's not going to bend too easy, so plywood or uh, maybe some aluminum with some sandpaper stuck to it, and you could file that down or sand that down. The thing with gluing or sticking sandpaper to a thinner piece of aluminum or plywood or something, I find when I try that with thin pieces like 1 8 it doesn't really stick very well and it's always it's just not enough adhesive and it falls off and it's quite annoying but the best way by hand is these little numbers by Stumac so these saddle slot levelers they're they have a coarse side and a finer side so you can really dial in how much you're taking off and the 1 8 is what I use the most and obviously they have a safety edge so to speak both sides that you're not filing the sides of the saddle wall away and that's the same with the nut seating files which these are really nice same principle, exactly the same principle, just longer, and these ones come in a wider variety. But I use these both all the time, and they're really, I really recommend these two, and these two as well. So these two are primarily used to clean out and make sure uh, it's flat, the bottom of a pocketed saddle slot. Uh, they're really good, they just fit straight in and you can make sure that they're flat for really good saddle to wood contact for better sound. This one is going to be really good for longer through saddles like this, but uh, I also use this for every build. So I'm just slowly taking this wood down, the plug. Now because the, the pocket that the under saddle pickup was routed with a 332nd bit. It's actually given me a little bit of an edge because I can see the edges of the 1 8 saddle slot and so it's it's actually quite easy to not go too deep. I think I'll stop there with the chisel. I'll just move on to the 1 8 saddle slot file. I'm just concentrating in the middle where the plug is and I'm paying attention to the ends which I want to remain unsanded. So I, this is going to work well, this uh, nut seating file, but I can't use it this way because the treble side is slanting down and the handle hits. So I'm going to come in from the base side and yeah, that's going to work and that means I don't have to remove the red part, which is desirable just because, you know, I like the red part. Just removing the high glue residue off the sides. So just working up to the final depth of this plug, what I can do is use a ruler and just slide it up and if there's a gap underneath the end, either end, then I know that it's not quite sanded down enough. And for a final check, this is looking really good, for a final check, use the saddle, slide it up, get that end really flush with everything else and there's no gap under there so that's perfect getting out of my way I was hiding bulletproof the mysteries of guitar repair are never ending uh, you never know what the last person did um, or what the next person's gonna do but uh, there's always a solution and there's always a workaround and there's always a tool uh, and you just have to know which is the best one for the best 
time and for the right job. So I really recommend these tools. Uh, you'll be if you buy these, you'll be using them all the time in as a repairer, as a guitar maker, uke maker, whatever maker, um, love maker. <laughs> you will, uh, yeah. I've been using these for years, and they're they're just essential tools to me now. So if you like this video and learned something, please like and subscribe. Uh, in the future, I'll be doing some giveaways for. Uh, Luthery tools like all the ones I've shown here, but you know more expensive bundles and stuff. So you'll, when I do them, you'll have to subscribe to be in the draw. And uh, but so you might as well get started right now. And I can't wait for those videos to drop. They're going to be good. And uh, if you have any ideas for future videos for me, I'm always willing to accommodate anyone who's having trouble with something uh, as long as it's in my building schedule uh, then I just film as I'm doing it and uh, try and teach so thank you very much see you in the next video bye we've got a perfect storm we don't care about the second wind or something else Take for someone else to keep us warm.